In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to generate a cross-sectional profile for a line drawn across a raster like this using QGIS. So what I have done over here is I've just created a line across an elevation raster like this and I have generated the corresponding cross-sectional profile as a graph in this manner using QGIS and to do this we're going to make use of a tool called profile tool and I'm going to explain to you guys in detail what you can do with this tool in this tutorial. So to do this you're going to have to use a raster data set which uh, represents some kind of an elevation variation and I'll be using such a raster which I have named as digital elevation model or DEM.TIFF which I can simply drag and drop into my workspace like this now don't worry, I'll be providing you guys with this file as well. So you'd be able to download it from the link that I'm going to give in the description of this video. And after that, you're going to have to extract it and use this DEM file, which you can simply drag it and drop it into your workspace directly from this file explorer as well. And before I go ahead to the cross-sectional profile generation part, I'm just going to get myself familiarized just a little bit to get a hang of what this data set represents. Now here on the legend you can see that uh, it indicates that the elevations do vary from 134 meters all the way up until 4777 meters. So it's relatively a huge range and the darker colors are supposed to be showing these low elevations and the lighter colors should be showing these high elevations. Now just as a personal preference uh, I would much rather go ahead and change this to something a bit more vibrant than just having black and white just so that I would be able to see those highs and lows quite clearly. So I'm just going to double click over here and that will take me to this layer properties dialog box. From here I can select symbology and by default it's going to be single band grey. But since what I'm after is actually a bit more of a vibrant color scale, I'm going to select a single band pseudo color and maybe pick a color ramp uh, from here. And I think I will go for something like this. Click on apply. Or maybe something a bit more vibrant than that, like this turbo color ramp. Yeah, I think that looks all right. So again, the blue colors are showing low elevations and the red color spots are supposed to be showing these uh, high elevations. All right, now coming back to the task uh, of generating a cross-sectional profile. We're actually going to make use of a tool that's not typically prepackaged with QGIS, so we're going to have to install it as a separate plugin. So if you head over to plugins and go to manage and install plugins, you'll get access to a huge repository of external plugins and the plugin that I'm after is called profile tool. So if you simply search for profile tool over here, you'll be able to find it right over here. And what this does is it's basically a tool that plots profile lines from raster layers. So to install this, all I have to do is just hit this install plugin button and that's just going to take a couple of seconds to configure the tool. And once you have done that, you can again go to plugins and right over here, now you'll see a new tool called profile tool. So select Terrain Profile from here. And this is what this tool is going to be all about. This, as you can see, is the graphing area. And this section is where you're going to add your layers. Right now we are just dealing with one single layer. So I can select this layer and click on this Add Layer. And anytime when it generates the graph, it's actually going to show you that graph in red color. So as you can see, if you have multiple layers or multiple raster data sets, and if you want to kind of create a bunch of different graphs all together, you could do that as well. All you have to do is just select the layer and click on this add layer button. All right, so since we have added our layer, in order to generate a cross-sectional profile, all I have to do is just head over to the raster and try to create a line like this. So I'm just going to draw a line like this and left click again to kind of conclude your marking and right click to be done with it. So what we generated right over here is basically the cross-sectional profile along this line that I drew across what seems to be 
a large river around here. And the cool thing is when I move my mouse pointer along this graph like this from left to right, you can see exactly over here on the map view which point I'm looking at. So if I really wanted to have an idea about the elevation of the mid part of the river, which appears to be right over here, you can see that the point is exactly at the middle of that river and and if you look at the corresponding y value it tells me that it's about 582 meters above the mean sea level and if i keep on moving my mouse pointer to the right side you can see that we are kind of crossing over to the river bank area and again we are going down uh, right over here so this is pretty much how you generate the cross-sectional profiles and your cross-section doesn't really have to be a straight line always for example, let's say if I wanted to have a line with curves like this, I could very well do that as well. And to be done with it, all you have to do is just right click once. So now what we are seeing over here is basically the cross sectional profile along that polyline segment that I just uh, digitized over here on the map. And again, you can see that as we are crossing through this low elevation area, which appears to be nothing but the mid part of the river, that lowest elevation point, which happens to be about 483 meters, as it indicates along the y-axis. And if I keep on moving my mouse pointer to the right side, I'd be able to get the elevation of these higher grounds as well, which appears to be about 2,554 meters. So that's a huge difference in the range between these highest points and these lower river levels. And guys, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to getting these uh, cross-sectional profiles displayed on a graph like this. Now you can be fancy with uh, things like changing the color. For example, let's say if you wanted to use a different color for this, let's say something like blue, you can see that the color of this line changes to blue. And at the same time, if you want to save this graph as a PNG, what you can do is you can just, uh, well, select this graph PNG and save as, go to your working folder, and I'm just going to save this as my graph, which I would be able to access by just simply double clicking over here. All right, I'm going to clear this out by simply right clicking over here. And now I want you guys to pay attention to this x-axis right over here. So for example, if I go ahead and maybe just draw a quick line like this again, I think we don't really have any issues regarding the y-axis because as you can see from the legend, what the y-axis should be indicating is elevation values, which should be ranging between 134 meters and 4,777 meters. And the y-axis does seems to make sense, but if you're looking at the x-axis, you can see that it basically varies from 0 all the way up until something around 0 0.24, which doesn't really make sense because if you're actually looking at the distance from this point to this point, if I take my measure tool from here, measure line tool, and if I just roughly check the distance from here to here, it's supposed to be about 30,580 meters or in kilometers, that's about 30 kilometers. So what's going on over here? Well, what you're seeing right over here on the x-axis is basically distance measured in decimal degrees. And the reason for that is right now my project is using EPSG 4326 as its project coordinate reference system. So if you want things to be in meters, even when it comes to the x-axis, what you have to do is you're going to have to change the project CRS from this EPSG 4326, which is a geographic coordinate system, to a projected coordinate reference system, which uses meters as its unit of measurement. So if I click over here, I'll have access to a bunch of different uh, projected coordinate reference systems. Now, the one that I typically tend to go would be EPSG 38. 57, which is the WGS 1984 pseudo Mercator or Web Mercator projection, which is actually used by many mapping services like Google Maps, S3 Maps, Bing Maps, and so on. 
And uh, even if you come down here, you'll be able to see that the measurement units are actually in meters. So I'm going to select this as my project CRS instead of 4326. So click on apply and click on OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to exit out from my profile tool and I'm just going to reload it back. Go to terrain profile from here. And now if I try to generate, well, first of all, I'm going to have to add this layer. And now if I go ahead and try to generate a cross-sectional profile for this particular line, now do you see that my x-axis has been changed to vary from zero all the way up until about 35 or 36 thousand and in kilometers that's about 35 or 36 kilometers and that makes perfect sense so if you ever get stuck in that issue of your x-axis suddenly showing values that do not really make sense then probably this might be the issue you're going to have to change the projection or the crs of your project and things will work out just fine now there are a couple more options uh, right over here. So if you go to table, you'll basically be able to get a set of numerical values that describes each point along this graph. So that's really helpful if you want to bring this graph into something like Microsoft Excel. And if you just kind of want to go ahead and create your own graph, what you can do is you can just select copy to clipboard and after that, you can open up your spreadsheet processing software like this. Just uh, hit Control V and it'll get pasted like this. So this column would be the distance and this column would be the elevation. So if you want to create your own graph, all you have to do is just select the two columns. You can go to insert, go to scatter and you can basically create a line graph like this. So this is basically the same graph that we saw just a few seconds ago, right over here. So that's a quick and easy way of actually bringing the underlying data into a spreadsheet and creating the graph yourself. So I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to show you guys regarding this tool. So if you did like the tutorial, give it a thumbs up. And if you do have any questions, don't forget to add a comment down below as well. I'll see you guys again with another tutorial soon.